Um, so I'm a visual artist and the, I'm going to play uh, a hybrid film that I made in the beginning of 2011, um, which runs exactly five minutes. So I'm just going to talk until it's done. Um, <clears throat> this picture is called Ecstatic Picture Spilled Milk and it's a hybrid film. I call my work hybrid films because I like the way that it describes the way they're made by combining photographic and uh, material and animation, but also that it, um, they come from a culturally hybrid starting point. Um, India has got everything to do with why cultural hybridity is um, where my work comes from. It's only in the last uh, couple of years that I've been found a way to actually work with recognizably Indian imagery. Um, it took a really long time for me to get to this because my Bengali father passed away when I was 18 months and I grew up with a European American mother. Um, so even though I had been to India many times and was communicating a lot with my family, by the time I started making art, I never really understood how to express that part of me um, in the work or felt like I, I owned it, except by being really interested in science fiction. Um, I, I, I sometimes wonder if I became an artist because of having a very essential foundational relationship to the unknown from the beginning of my life. So when I started to make these hybrid films, I was basically looking um, for ways to depict uh, indeterminate substances. And I, I realized that I wanted to make video that was, um, that described events more like the way that paintings described an event um, as a sort of tactile event. And so I started trying to think about um, what kind of painting would um, show me different kinds of ways of depicting the tactile, indeterminate kind of material, the kind of material that can describe, for instance, the, the transformation of something that comes from the earth and takes a long time to form that turns then into a currency and becomes um, immater immaterial. Um, and so the most, uh, some of the most obvious images for me to start looking at, I started to remember this book that it was one of the only traces of my father in the house that I grew up, um, which is Indian um, devotional images translated through the International Society for, Christian Cons for Krishna Consciousness. And um, I remembered my response to those images when I was really young, that to the luminosity of them, um, and to this sort of strange, like I had a like pull over me. And so I started to look around for more of these images. And I found this um, Om from India online, which is a collection by uh, two contemporary print collectors who fell in love with Indian devotional images. Um, and they started to collect images by the presses like Ravi Varma or the um, Calcutta Art Studio. Um, and I was really interested in with looking at these early calendar art images of the ways that the luminous quality combined with a kind of flatness really related to the space of the screen, um, the luminosity of the digital realm that I was working with. And then when I realized what was going on in the pictures, basically that Indian deities were being depicted in the Western style landscape for the first time. I realized, I had a sort of like epiphany, and I realized that this was sort of the pictures that could allow me to work with my own genetic history because that moment was, um, the moment of creolization depicted in the pictures was directly decided to tied for my reason for being here and also related to the reason that contemporary India can feel like it speaks from the future in a global context. Because the pictures embody the moment that India begins to become post-colonial, um, because they took on a visual language of the colonizers and um, used it to make Indi images of Indianness. So um, when I started to make get, I started to get really excited about working directly with those images, and um, that's the first time I was able to make this kind of work. Um, when I was making this picture, I was thinking a lot about the ambivalence that um, members of my own generation felt um, when entering the workforce and going into a sort of corporate situation once the multinationals began to be admitted into India um, because they'd been brought up with the idea of uh, post-colonial self-sufficiency. And so for them, it was some kind of thing to go through um, to, to see what was going to happen. Um, with India. I was also thinking about the way that cell phones have sort of revolutionized village life there um, and changed things for people who didn't have access to technology because they were unregulated unre by the government in the same way that um, television was, just because the development was so fast. So the overspilling substance here um, kind of has something to do it's supposed to evoke something about the maternal and also maybe about the nationalistic. And then the phones are um, 
have to do with that development of that technology um, and and the sort of unknown about where what that technology becomes once the object is uh, unuseful. Um, hopefully, the whole picture evokes the, the sense of India's position as one of the world's uh, huge technology centers and at the t same time the most sacred site. Thank you. <laughs>